Okay, so I just noticed when I was um, editing the last videos that I had done, well, mildly editing the last videos that I had done, I noticed that a lot of the times the key stroke information that I had set up here was getting hidden by my menu. So sometimes if I make something, this would appear on top of what I was doing and would probably block your view. So we'll just move that over to the other side of the screen to keep it out of um, keep it out of the way from being obstructed by panels like the, this little fella here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take what we've already learned on making these sections of roof and we're going to make a couple more. And because we kind of put the work into making these using mirror modifiers and setting them up so that they're perfectly in line with the grid, they're making or changing these around and making other segments based on these is going to be very simple. So I know I'm happy enough to take these for the moment. So I'm going to just, I'm going to just add them over here. As I know they're, they're pretty much finished. I don't want to go making changes to them. I might come back and uh, do something with them later, but for the moment they're as done as they're going to be. I'm going to use this guy and I'm going to duplicate him and I want to Alt and J and put him back in the center. The reason I want him in the center is because I know that I have this um, set up. So I'm going to turn this from a corner segment into a T-junction and it's very simple now that I have all this hard work already done. So what I can do is go into X-Ray here, toggle that on, go into edit mode and I'm going to go into top view. And all I need to do is dissect this down the center and mirror that over. It's a very simple, very simple job. So I'm just going to go to my knife tool, I'm going to click and hold and go to the bisect. And I'm just going to click up here, press A to select everything because you need to select the face you want to cut through. So A will select everything on the mesh. I'll click on this green line as close to perfectly on it as I can. So I'll click once and I'm just going to come down along the green line until I get out the other side. And with the um, uh, mouse button, the left mouse button held down, I'll find the other side of the line here and I'll release it. And what that will now, that's after cutting straight through, straight through the mesh. So I'll go back into top view and I will go to select, select faces and I'm going to delete everything on the straight side. Press X and faces. So now I only have half of the mesh, but it's the half that has the turn on it. So now we just need to make sure that this is perfectly in line with the center. So I'll go back into top view, press 1 to go into vertex select and I'm going to click and drag over all the vertices along this middle line and I wanted to make sure they're on the middle line. I know that they're, they should be lined up here on the x-axis. So I'll press S, X and 0. So with that done, I'll go, I'll come out of X-Ray and I'll go to my modifiers and add a mirror. And just like that, you have a cross section done. Very simple. I'll already apply it and I'll add it to the bunch. So I'm pretty sure by now you can kind of see where it's going. I can actually, again, use what we have here and I'm going to make another section from this. So actually I'll duplicate this straight out. Also, I want to change this because the pivot point is way out here. I don't want that to be the case. So before I actually move on, I'm going to fix that pivot. I'm going to press Alt G to bring it to the center. Actually, I'm going to remove our makeshift house shell here. Press Alt G, put that back. And I wanted to pivot from the center, from the center of the, the steepest part of the house here. So I'll go back into top view. And I'm going to go into x-ray again so we can probably see through it through the mesh i can't see through the mesh now all right well i'm just gonna have to guess this i'll press tab to go into edit mode three to go into base select a to press all and because i have i'm doing this in edit mode it's not going to move my origin point it's only going to move to geometry so i'm going to move the geometry up until it lines up with that red line And that looks a little off, so I wanted to zoom in on this. 
Yeah, you can see there where it's kind of overset. So I'll, I'll turn off snap here. I'm just going to pull this back along the line. Now, hopefully that will work. I'll turn on my snap again and I'm going to just try to line it up with a previous piece. It should snap to it. Alright. That looks pretty okay to me. Alright, it'll do for now. If I need to make modifications, I'll actually swap into from snap from grid into vertex, and I'll just snap the, the vertices to this guy, which I know is the spot on. Alright, I'll just put him aside for the moment. And I will take a duplicate and bring him to the center. Oh gee. And now I only want this front piece here. So I can nearly come in and hand pick the geometry I want. So I'll just hold down shift. And I'm gonna select the pieces. Actually I'll probably make it easier on myself. I'll go to top view. And I'll just big drag a box around those front pieces. And then I'll hold shift and select. In X-ray, you need to make sure you're selecting the, the center point, the little black dot on the face. So that'll select everything. And now from that, I want to press Control and I to invert my selection. And X and delete faces. Right, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with that uh, bottom piece there, but for the moment I want to test this and I want to make sure it's going to serve the function I'm looking for. The reason I done that basically was um, if we copy this. And let's just say we wanted a part that's going to cut off in the T, like another T junction, but not a full piece, just for demonstration's sake I'll pull that out, and we'll grab him and I will snap him back, I'm down too low if I move him up, alright there we go, and then maybe from there we could Bring this guy back. And we could duplicate that a few times. Pretty sure you get the idea. Okay, so that's a that's another piece we can bring to the pile. And these are lateral. Alright, so just mainly from making this one piece here, we were able to quickly use that geometry and just extrude other variants of what we want. I'm actually just going to join these together. And also, I think when I was looking at this off video, I kind of decided in my head that I wasn't too keen on the overhang. I know it'll, in some circumstances it'll be useful, but I kind of want a clean design as well where it's flush. So what I'm going to do is I'll make a copy of it, copy of this one. Oh, 
that one is a copy. All right, never mind. So I'm gonna actually use um. That was the best way to do this. Okay, there's a vertex in the midpoint, so we can actually use a vertex snap section here. So what I'll do is I will come into edit mode here. I'm gonna select this triangular piece. Press L to select a lot. One, and it'll convert my selection into ver or vertices. And now in my snap section here, I want to change this. So I want to snap this vertex back to that vertex and bring all of the front facing birds with that. So what I'll do is I'll select just the front two, I want to convert that into vertex, and then I'll come up to my snaps and in the drop down, I want to choose vertex. So I was going to snap to a vertex and make sure closest to set with project onto self. I don't know how important that is. To be honest, I don't even know what that does but it gives me good results, so I'll say just leave it on for now. And with those selected, I'll press G, and then when I move this back towards that vert, it'll snap perfectly firm. So I know now that those walls are all perfectly in line together and have a much stronger overhang, but we can use that to our advantage later on when it comes to doing decoration for the front of the house and stuff like that. So all we done was duplicated that and we created a new piece to use. So I'll add him. Oh, I'm still snapping the verts. So I want to come out of vertex, go back to increment snapping. And now we can move this up along the grid right beside his friend there. Okay, so we're going to make, in this one, we're going to make a... Um, a very small piece, but quite a nice one I find. It's like an exterior corner piece, but we're going to use, we're going to end up by cutting this corner off, setting the pivot point to the middle, and so this can then rotate into how many, like four if you want, give it a perfect square, but it also sits pretty nicely on um, wall corners, such as this. So I'll straight away, I'm just going to grab that, I can see the pivot issue here. Let me fix that first. I'll go into top down. Alt G, set up the center. There we go. Q. All transforms and bring it back. Let me just make sure that lines up. Yeah, it looks fine. I should really be uh, fixing the pivot point as I go, but ah, time and all that. Okay, so I want to make a corner piece out of this, uh, a small little corner piece. So I'll press Shift D and duplicate it. Alt G to set it to center, and I want to isolate this. I want to isolate this on its own. So I'll press the forward slash over the A key, and that'll isolate the section. Okay, so I want this outside corner. So previously, or similar to what we've done previously, I'm going to go into X-ray mode. Tap the green to edit mode. And I want to select all my pieces. Press A to select everything. And again, I'm going to use the bisect tool. And I'm going to just run it across this red line first. And then release the cut and I'll zoom out so we can see the green and I'm going to do the same I just want to bring it down along this green line there we go now back into edit or select mode select everything no I won't I'm just going to click and drag on all oh the second one didn't cut because I did not have it selected okay I'll try that again eight select everything this time and run it along the green line. And release. Okay. Now I'll try that again. Select all. Put my bottom corner. And delete faces. So now I just need to make sure. That these are, are flush. So I'll select all. On this side I want to make this flat on the y-axis here, so S, Y, 0, enter, and on the Y, I'm going to set my value here to 0. 
that'll put me directly in line. And this is on the X axis, so S, X, zero. And zero on the body. All right, so I'll press the forward slash to come out of isolate. And I'll duplicate him. But now you can see when I duplicate again, what I was going for. Yeah, that lines up pretty good. Alright, so now that I know that that works, we can actually set up like a exterior fencing going around this later on. So I'll remove these. And I'll add this fella here. Actually, he's resting on the ground plane here. I don't really want him to do that, so I'll... Bring him into place, bring him up. And then I'm just going to ro rotate him so he's front facing. And now with that in place there, I'll press Q and transforms. So now he's good to go. I'll add him to our library here. Alright, so our roof pieces are starting to and build up. Alright, so I think we have enough to kind of work with and get going on most things here with that. So I think the next step would probably be to show how they're UV unwrapped and get some textures onto them. And then we can actually start putting the scene together. And I think once, once you reach that point where you're actually building stuff, ideas will come to you more. And you'll get you'll get some ideas um, about where you want to take it. Before I do that, though, I think what I'll do actually is I'll show. Sometimes you see little windows that come out of these kind of roof parts here. Once I have that done, I pretty much have all the cornerstones in place, and I'll go from that point there on to texturing and showing how to set the materials and all of that.